Well, I got another little issue here to tackle with my 77 Chevy C10. I've got the uh, the old Saginaw three-speed three on the tree transmission. The problem I'm having uh, is with the reverse lights. I've been uh, they've been kind of functioning intermittently, and I've diagnosed it as a problem with the switch. Now I've actually had to buy uh, two switches, and both of them have failed, and they're not cheap. Uh, they're about forty dollars a piece. So I've come up with a solution uh, that I think is going to uh, fix the problem. Uh, and the switch was considerably cheaper uh, than the original switch. So let me get the camera set up in the truck. We'll go over the original switch. I'll show you how that works, and then I'll show you my uh, plan for uh, how I'm going to fix it. So we're inside the truck. You're looking up at the base of the steering column uh, where it goes through the firewall. Here's the original switch for the three on the tree uh, column shifted transmission. Uh, this is the factory reverse light switch. And basically, let's see if I can get it up there. The switch mounts on top of the steering column, roughly in this area. Okay? So, the way it works is inside the column, there is a collar, and that's your shift collar. On the collar, stamped into it, is a small little raised area, like a little tang, that catches on this piece right there. This piece slides and completes the circuit and the reverse lights turn on. So you can see it's supposed, it's there's a little spring in there and it's supposed to pop back and I've greased this thing up. You can kind of see there's a bunch of dielectric grease in there. Um, like I said, this is the second new switch that I've had to buy. Um, they're just a pain in the butt and see I can't, see if I can get this thing to reset there it goes but uh, I've taken these apart I've cleaned them uh, reassembled them and I'm still having issues with them so uh, like I said I'm gonna uh, see if I can cure this problem once and for all so let me go show you the new switch uh, that I plan to use and uh, then we'll go over how I plan to use it all right here's the little switch that I'm gonna be using uh, to replace that column mounted uh, reverse light switch, uh, the factory switch uh, on that truck. Um, this actually is not a GM piece. It's not even uh, for a four-wheel vehicle. It's actually for a motorcycle. Uh, a few years ago, a friend of mine built uh, a custom motorcycle out of a Yamaha XS650, and I helped him with the build, and I've got a few videos uh, of that bike on my channel if you want to go check those out. Um, so basically what I did is I got on eBay, typed in, XS650 brake light switch, uh, and this is it right here. Uh, let me give you a little more information on the switch because I don't, all I knew was XS, Yamaha XS650. Uh, from the uh, seller's description, it fits uh, an RD250, RD350, 78 through 79 LB50, 75 through 78 LB80, 78 through 80 XS650. 77 through 78 XS 750 and 78 through 81 XS 1100. So, uh, if you wanted to find this switch, you could just do what I did and just type in XS 650 uh, brake light switch. And basically, here's how it works when you pull up on the switch like that, it completes the circuit and uh, sends electricity out to uh, the brake light in its original. Uh, configuration and uh, in my case the reverse lights so this is actually a little spring right here this connects to uh, on the motorcycle it connects to uh, the brake lever uh, the rear brake uh, foot pedal has a little you know the pedals out here it's got a little arm so when you depress the brake pedal pulls out on that switch activates the brake lights so one of the things that I need to do uh, to make this work for my application is I'm going to be replacing this spring and I went to the hardware store and I picked up 12 inches of this uh, I believe is 364 diameter uh, stainless steel braided wire and then I got a, a few little uh, crimp ferrules to go with it. I got three just in case I lose one. I'm really only going to need two. So I'm going to take this spring off and replace it uh, with this wire 
And for right now, until I get it, the switch mounted to the truck, uh, I'm gonna leave this wire long, but right now I'm gonna pull the spring out, route the uh, braided cable through that hole, crimp it, and then we'll get this mounted up into the truck. Okay, so there we got the little ferrule wrapped around the wires. Uh, it's dark outside right now, so I'm gonna take this out to the bench vise, uh, hammer on this ferrule to get it crimped in place, uh, and then I'll come back and I'll show you the end result. So we're underneath the truck here, and I know you don't have a very good view of this. This arm right here is the first and reverse uh, shift lever. The one in front of it is the second and third. So if I bring this, right now it's in neutral. If I bring it backwards, that's first gear. Back to neutral, if I push it to the front, that's reverse. So, my plan is I'm gonna put the switch roughly in this position, and you can see the reason for the, the cable that we attached earlier. I'm gonna drill a hole through the arm right here, and I've got a little uh, number eight screw that I'm gonna put through there. We're gonna cut the cable shorter, make another loop, this, and then that little screw is going to hold the other end of this cable. So, and also what I'm going to be doing, these two bolts right here on the back of the transmission, I'm going to make a bracket that comes out. It's probably just going to be a flat uh, piece of steel. I'll drill two holes. It'll bolt to the back of the transmission here. It'll have another hole roughly in this area. And right about in there is where the switch is going to go. So, like I said, when you uh, when the transmission gets shifted into reverse, it's going to pull the cable, activating the switch. So, let me go ahead. I'll start. Fabric, I'll make a template, and then we'll go make a, a bracket, and uh, then we'll see if we can get all this stuff installed. All right, so I've determined where the hole is gonna be uh, for the switch itself. And it's right here at the tip of my punch. Uh, I've already marked it, punched it out, it's ready to get drilled out. This, the switch, the diameter of the threaded part, uh, the mounting lug on this switch, uh, I've measured it out at 7 16 I'm gonna drill the hole uh, to half inch because I don't have a 7 16 inch drill bit. Uh, it's likely metric, uh, considering it came off a Japanese uh, motorcycle, or it's for a Japanese motorcycle. Uh, but like I said, it, 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 with the standard system, I measured it at uh, 7 16 of an inch, and like I said, I'm going to drill it to half inch. That'll, it'll have a little bit of play, but uh, it won't be that bad. Alright, here's pretty much what I've got completed here. I have the bracket that I fabricated uh, bolted to the side of the transmission. Going back here to the switch itself. Shorten that... Uh, piece of braided wire and uh, right now the transmission is in neutral so let me push it into reverse and you can see here the plunger pulls out 
completes the circuit, activates the rear uh, backup lights. So that's neutral again. There's first. We just get some slack in the wire. We don't have any binding or anything like that. So neutral, back to reverse, pulls the switch. So that's pretty much it. Let's uh, we'll go test out the lights here in just a second. Uh, one thing else I wanted to show you. Another one of the main reasons I got this switch is uh, um, I knew it would work, or I, at least I, I had a pretty good idea that it would work. Uh, not to mention it's for a motorcycle, so uh, it's capable of being out in the elements. Um, so what you saw originally was just a couple of uh, uh, bullet connectors. Well, I've spliced in a GM weather pack connector just to keep things a little bit more watertight. So, and I used uh, just some butt connectors, some heat shrinkable butt connectors on both ends. Everything's wired up. I need to clean out the wiring a little bit, but uh, nonetheless, it's wired up. So like I said, let's, uh, let's get the cameras set up and uh, we'll go see if the lights work. So that's it, I got the, fit, the switch all mounted up, I got some wire loom on those loose wires. Again there's my uh, weather pack connector made in Taiwan or whatever, but oh well. As long as it keeps the water and dirt and road grime out of there, that's all that really matters. Extends over there to the frame, and then into the existing wiring harness. And so, uh, so yeah, that's it. Switch is in, the switch works. Uh, hopefully it'll last a nice long time, uh, and hopefully it'll it'll work better than uh, uh, the original switch, uh, at least over time. Um, those switches do tend to work, but <laughs> not for very long. So uh, anyway, like I said, that's it. I appreciate y'all watching, and if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Mm -hmm.